What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Terrier Owner YouTube channel. We're happy to have you back. Today guys, we are going to be talking about a topic that I believe that a lot of you probably will run into. Or you would try this situation at one point or another, so I think it's a very important topic to talk about with this dog. Today guys, we are going to talk about how a Jack Russell Terrier, like Luna here, is going to behave if you attempt to adopt a cat or vice versa if you own a cat now and you want to adopt a Jack Russell. So this entire video we're going to go over the you know the risk, the recommendations and what you need to be aware of for Jack Russell Terriers and cats to either successfully or unsuccessfully live in the same household. As always guys before we dive into it I say it on every video but a thumbs up on this video really shows YouTube that you guys enjoy the videos and it helps us get seen by others with Jack Russell. So if you could do that for us, that would be great. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so you're notified next week when our new video comes out. Outside of that guys, let's dive into this topic and talk about if it is possible for a dog like Luna here to get along with a cat and let me tell you that I do have a personal story it has been attempted and I will save the ending of that story towards the end of the video so you are gonna have to stick around to hear how it went but let's start with some basic tips on this topic and the first thing I will tell you is that it's a tricky situation with this dog with a cat mainly because of the prey drive that a Jack Russell has animals that are smaller and huntable or that a Jack Russell believes in their mind that they should be hunting uh, using that strong prey drive they have a tough time backing down from that behavior pattern. So the first thing I will tell you, or the first tip that I have, would be that you have to socialize them immediately if that's going to happen. So if you have a cat now, you need to determine in your head if you think it's a good idea to bring home a Jack Russell. Do you think that cat's going to get along with a Jack Russell? Is a house built to where they can have separate space? Things like that. If it's a flip side and you already have a Jack Russell, you really need to start socializing when the Jack Russell first gets home. You need to start that process with supervision and start it immediately. The more that the dog and the cat can be exposed to each other, the less risk you'll have down the road of them having an aggressive behavior towards one another. So socializing young is super important. That's important with this dog with everything. That's important with people. That's important with other animals. It's important for a Jack Russell to be socialized with dogs right away. And that's an animal that it, even socialized, you're not going to have much of an issue with, but a cat's a little bit different. So let's move into tip number two. Tip number two, guys, guys is something I just talked about super briefly in the first tip but you really need to make sure that the environment is also set up to have a Jack Russell and a cat living together just because you have supervised the interactions for say a year two years three years and it's been fine doesn't mean that aggression can't spark or a Jack Russell might enter that prey drive mode so what do I mean by environment well essentially a cat needs an escape path because I think we can all agree that a Jack Russell is probably going to win that battle nine times out of ten if aggression does spark. So do you have high spots in the home because cats can jump very easily? Can the cat, basically if the cat needed to be away from the dog because they were getting angry with each other, is there somewhere the cat can easily get to where the Jack Russell can't follow? That probably sounds like a super scary statement but it's really not meant to be. It's meant to be just a basic safety outlet that you need for the cat. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's been three years, four years, or even five years, it is possible that aggression will spark when you don't think that it will. So if you're going to do it, or even if you're doing it now but you're newer to it, I would make sure that the environment is set up for the cat to have somewhere to go. This also includes things like separate crates, um, separate areas for everything. They shouldn't eat near each other. Items like that that could also cause some form of jealousy, anger, or you know, taking my food that Graham always does to Luna that, that kind of had them angry with each other in the beginning. You need to be thinking about things like that. You need to structure the environment inside and outside for them to have any chance of that being successful. The next thing I would keep in mind is that depending on where the cat is coming from, you got to be careful with the claw situation. So a lot of people have indoor outdoor cats. You can't remove the claws because then they have no way to defend themselves outside. On the flip side, if you keep the claws, those claws are sharp. So a cat naturally does that swap motion with their hissing and the sounds that a cat makes. And those striking a Jack Russell in the face, not only can draw blood or cause injury to the Jack Russell, to their eyes, their nose, or any of their face, but that is also going to really make a Jack Russell mad. If you swat Luna 
uh, like that as an animal that she already has a prey drive towards, good luck. Um, you really better have a high spot in that situation because that's not going to end well for the cat. The next thing I'd recommend, guys, is like supervision if they're together, like interacting, has to be present. You can't let up on this, I don't even think, five years down the road if you're going to do it. These two animals should not be outside free roaming together. They shouldn't even be in the living room hanging out together unless, like I said, if they were socialized super young, I'm talking puppyhood, like the infancy of their lives, you're probably gonna be okay. Um, but supervision should probably always be present. I wouldn't feel safe leaving them completely home alone in the same room with no escape area for the cat. Like I said, the aggression could spark at any time between two animals like that. You wanna make sure you're preventing any kind of harm or injury to both of the animals at that point and just exercising your best judgment to make sure that they're both safe at all times. So at this point, you're probably wondering, you know, what my actual recommendation is. I'm gonna go with it's not a good idea. And I will tell you why. And it's because we tried it um, about three months ago and it went horribly. But when we tried it, we did break um, at least one of those rules that we just went over. The biggest rule that we broke was the socialization factor. We had a cat that was a stray, essentially, or a homeless cat that was awesome. The cat was super friendly with us, super friendly with my son, and it, act, it acted as if it was, you know, abandoned or it had run away because it felt very domesticated. Um, the way it interacted with people, it wasn't skittish at all. It loved to be held, it loved to be pet. It would curl up in your lap and take a nap. All of that was awesome. So it's like, hey, that's a that's the kind of cat that I would want if I'm going to get a cat. However, all we were thinking in our head was tunnel vision that this is an awesome cat. Let's give it a try. So we tried to introduce the cat to Luna, which went not well. Um, Luna did not hurt the cat, but the cat actually swatted Luna across the face, which, like I said, that did not make Luna happy. And at that point, I knew that Luna was never going to back down again from this cat and that it was going to result in a winner-loser situation. Um, so the cat, unfortunately, could not stay. Um, I could just see it in Luna. Luna's either a sweetheart or once she flips that switch um, with an animal of that size, it's probably not going to end well. I knew that I would never be able to trust the situation at all um, if I wasn't around to watch them together even with me around supervising them i did not feel comfortable with the situation luna was very on edge i mean she wanted to have some lunch basically and it was a it wasn't a kitten but it was a very young cat and luna after luna took that claw to the face luna was not going to back down i could see that graham did a little bit better um labs i think are a much better dog with other animals like that. They don't have that super strong prey drive like Luna does. Um, but Luna has a Jack Russell immediately. You could see the prey drive kicked right in. That situation was not gonna go well. All in all, it you know ended up just being about a $100 mistake after buying some stuff for the cat and about a four hour trial run that failed. Now, I will say that I guarantee there are people that are going to watch this that have done it successfully and I do believe in that. But I believe the socialization started at the right time and it was a more formed bond between the two animals. Or you have a Jack Russell that is much more laid back than Luna. I know she seems super laid back and she typically is with most things, but when it comes to prey drive and other animals, that is one area where she is not laid back at all. Um, she is a beast when it comes to those things. So it did not work out. For anybody who has a Jack Russell that's past probably the age of six months and wants to get a cat, I don't think it would go great. It's going to take a lot of effort and it's going to be super stressful for you. Uh, the introductions to the two animals are very difficult and stressful. You don't want either animal to get hurt. And it's probably just not a good idea. I mean, this dog breed just doesn't do great with cats, period. That's my recommendation, guys, though. I would love to hear, you know, any of you that have done this successfully, I'd like to hear what I did wrong you know, what you recommend to anybody else watching that wants to do this scenario with a cat and a Jack Russell. So make sure you leave those comments down below so we can help out the entire community with this issue. Again, guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you're notified next week. Thumbs up goes a long way for us, guys, and never forget to check out TerrierOwner.com for all the recent blog posts that can help you with these topics as well. We are sorry to be the bad news in this situation with cats and Jack Russells getting along. It just didn't go well for us so we thought it was necessary to get a video out to you guys so that you knew what you were going to be getting into if you tried it outside of that guys that's all we got for you we appreciate you stopping by and we will see you in the next video take care